All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show over here. Today we will be discussing about the very much in news, the topic of paper-based uh, COVID-19 testing. Uh, so right off the bat, I want to talk about this thing that I have not found any test that is at home and is a simple strip of paper that can just be used with the saliva. So in both of those technologies that I'm going to discuss today, there is going to be paper-based result, but it still needs some machines. These testing systems are simplified. They are rapid. Their sensitivity and specific specificity is comparable to the other tests. So that means it is a it is a improvement on the testing, but we haven't yet reached the point of testing at home. So this will be more of a testing at the point of care system. And I wanted to share with you how these technologies work at a high level. So let's start our discussion. Once again, welcome to the talk. And let's look at the technologies. So first, let me go over various um, various news about these. So first of all, here is a every Everly Well. This is a company, so I do not have any association with them. I do not have any financial interest with them. But just generally, this is the usual testing done with the RT-PCR where you send them the nasopharyngeal swab and they would do the testing and they'll send the results back. That is one. So, And we know about these testing from our previous discussions. I have done a, a talk in which I went in a detail of how RT-PCR testing works. Then there is a newer generation of testing that is saliva-based testing instead of the RT-PCR. So this is one of the uh, articles about this one. Here is the company. Once again, no financial interest, nothing attached with them. It is a company called Sherlock Biosciences, and they have been making these testing kits, which simplify the process of detecting RNA or DNA viruses or other genetic issues with the cell. So we'll be talking about these tests today. Here is a a uh, quick look at how the, the test works, and I'll explain how it works. Then there is another uh, news in the, in the news cycle that 3M is also working with MIT to produce paper-based testing. I haven't yet seen what is their exact mechanism, that what how would it work, so I cannot explain how it will work. Plus, I have not yet seen any news in here where they've said that here is the way, it, uh, here is the technology, here are the results. Everything over here so far is this will happen, when this will happen, this would happen, and so on. So it is something in the future. And the, the date, of, if you see over here, July 14, here is another news about 3M. And again, date is July 14. Here, um, once more, spit-based testing. And again, this would also be somewhere in the future. So with these, I'm going to talk about two specific technologies today. One is the saliva direct. This technology has, I think, become approved or has become available. And they are working with the uh, NBL to uh, NBA, sorry, NBL. So NBA to uh, bring it out to for players and, and sportsmen because it can quickly be done. And the machines that are needed are not very big and easily uh, acquirable. So this is the saliva direct. COVID tracker, again, this is their company's uh, site, no financial interest, no interest at all attached with them, but I wanted you to kind of see what their sites are. This is NBA's news that NBA, Yale, land the COVID-19 testing breakthrough, the NFL and the general uh, US public has been hoping for. So again, this is the saliva direct over here, and we'll talk about it. This, this is a um, link from Harvard, where their professor Mina has been saying that, hey, we should have more of these um, paper-based testing to quickly figure out if a patient, if a person is infected by COVID-19 or not, instead of trying to figure out all the uh, antibodies and, and trying to bring the vaccine out. He is saying, why not we make these tests more prevalent and allow these tests to happen almost every at every point of care and very quickly know if people are sick with COVID-19 or not. So interesting idea. I have also linked a couple of videos for how these tests work, if you wanted to see their uh, illustrations. 
And then here is another link that I have put in the description, which shows RTQPCR. How does that work? I have done a video about it, but I just wanted to collect all that material for you together. So with this, all of these links are in the description. Now let's start how the testing is going or where do we stand? So look, in my opinion, the, the way tests are happening are the following. Number one, there is a question in our mind that am I infected? Do I have the SARS-CoV-2 right now in me or do I have COVID-19 right now? So for these tests, remember there is RT-PCR based tests that have been out there for some time. These are the nasopharyngeal swab that you take and then you send it to, to the lab and then they would do the test and within two, three days, half a week, whatever is the time because of the processing, you get the results. And for this one, I actually believe in uh, uh, this um, point that when you send the test out and the test arrives back in a week or two weeks, at that time, patient has already moved forward. This virus progresses very fast. So these are delayed tests, not very, very useful. Even when it comes back positive, possibly patient has already recovered or is recovering, hopefully, and is not becoming aggravated. So the it, this test, RT-PCR, or conventional test nowadays, will result, results would come back in days, normally nasopharyngeal swab. So we know that. Then the two more tests, am I infected area or in that category? One is the CRISPR-based test called Sherlock, and I'll explain that today. Sherlock can give the results within 45 minutes to 60 minutes, and it is a saliva-based test. And this is where I think that uh, news media has been kind of, and I can understand clickbaity. I do not make clickbaity uh, <laughs> the, uh, titles, and my viewership is actually usually less because I don't try to grab the you know attention incorrectly. But I think that in marketing and those things, clickbaity things are important. So many of the the links that I showed you. They say that we have a paper-based test and that can be make, making it very simple. But no, there are machines that are involved. And yes, the final result is in a paper strip, but there still is some more work to be done. And you cannot just, these machines are not just available. I, I In theory, you can go buy them and keep them at home as well. But usually they would be at point of care. That means in clinic or, for example, in case of NBA, in the player's uh, you know, lockers or those places where they can go and test themselves or in the clinics. So the Sherlock is one. The second one in this category that am I infected now is the Saliva Direct. And Saliva Direct is the one that is working with the NBA now. And I'll talk about that too. Then another category of tests is was I infected? Did I have the, um, the infection before and I have recovered? And that is the antibody test. And we all know about the antibody test as well. It can take days. Blood sample is needed instead of saliva for this one. And we also know that antibody tests are the, or did I have the infection? Tests are not yet complete in my opinion because it's not only just the antibody. In some people, it is a T cells, the cytotoxic T cell or the innate arm that becomes more active and not enough antibodies are generated, but they are still immune or had the disease and have recovered. So I think this area of was I infected, this area would need to be further added by more tests in the future. Then there are a couple of more categories of tests that I see are needed, but are not done yet. One is how bad can I be affected? And imagine that there are question marks here question mark here, question mark here. How bad can I be impacted by this virus? So this is where the, just like we have tests for allergies, where a person can go to an allergist, they can do some tests on, on their skin and then come back and say that you may be, or you are allergic to let's say dander or dust or pollen and so on. Similarly for COVID-19 at some point, there need to be tests where a healthy person can say, please take my cells and then come back to me and tell me that if I got it, do I have a chance of severe disease so that then they can be ready and try to figure out how to manage themselves. So such tests are not there yet. And another uh, test set that is not available, but I think should be at some point, that is that 
what is going on in my body once I have recovered? So this is for the long haulers, that if I have become a long hauler, what kind of tests should I do to figure out, is it the immune system dysregulated or is it the virus still present in my body or is it the lung uh, or the tissue damages or a combination of all of those? So there is no test protocol for the long haulers yet. But in my opinion, for exhaustive tests, these are the four categories of the tests that are needed. So now I'm going to go back here to talk about these two technologies primarily. These are the spit-based test or saliva-based test. These are the tests that have been said as the paper-based test. And many of the clickbaity things are that we have paper-based at home tests, which gives you result in minutes. The You can call them at home, but they still need machines. So let's look at them. First of all, let's go to the Sherlock. And for these, the links that I have shown, these links have these couple of uh, PDFs there as well. So this is a PDF for the point of care testing. So see, they're not saying at home testing. Point of care means clinic or wherever you, you want to put those machines where you want to test people. So this is the point of care testing for COVID-19 using Sherlock Diagnostics. So this is the Sherlock Biosciences that they, they have made it. So I have some highlights over here. I'm going to explain it, and those highlights would be taken care of. The other one, PDF, is with the uh, Saliva Direct. And this is the paper from the Saliva Direct that how a simplified sensitive molecular diagnostic test for surveillance, SARS-CoV-2 surveillance can occur. The difference between these two um, is the following. This test is an altogether new method for testing. The technology is not new. The method is new for COVID testing. And this test over here, the saliva direct, is actually a simplification of RT-PCR. And they have reduced the number of um, the type of substrates needed. They have reduced the need for amplifying the RNA or, or DNAs. And they have reduced the need for the type of genes to be seen. So this, I would call it as a more optimal test using saliva. And it is still an RT-PCR type test. So let's look at these technologies. So here is how Sherlock works. Sherlock stands for Specific High Sensitivity Enzymatic Reporter Unlocking. And I'll explain what okay. this means. But then you take these some words from uh, letters from here, and that makes Sherlock. Here is how it works. First of all, you take a person's saliva, and you amplify the RNA in it. And we have done this discussion in the past that how the amplification of an RNA can be done. You can take a piece of RNA and then just keep making copies, and that would then become a lots of RNA. So the first step is amplified RNA. Second step is that, and again, this would be done within 40 to 60 minutes. So it's a fast test. Second test is that inside this um, saliva, in that tube, you also put a protein called reporter for Cas13. So I'll explain what these reporters are, but Cas13 is an important one over here. So Cas13 is added as well. Cas13 is a protein, and I'll illustrate how it works. You can think about it as a scissor that will be cutting various things based on the detection of a specific part of an RNA. So for example, if the COVID-19 RNA is present and the Cas13 is structured in a way that it can detect that RNA, then it would have a scissors on it that would become active and would cut the re reporters with it. And the reporters in turn are molecules that when they are cut, they would fluoresce or they would give emit light and that light can be detected. So I'm going to explain that mechanism, how that works. But keep in mind, reporters are needed and the Cas13 protein is needed. So these are added to the amplified saliva RNAs. So now let's see how this mechanism work. The This is called the CRISPR mechanism. And let's see how it works. And I've made a um, mechanical plus electrical diagram to kind of show how this works. So remember, uh, imagine that our objective is that this thing over here, these two molecules are reporter molecules. They are connected with each other. And when they are connected, they do not fluoresce. But if you connect, disconnect them, then one of them would start fluorescing or emitting light or photons that we can then detect. So the objective is that somehow we have to make a mechanism or at the protein level 
we have to make a mechanism that if it detects the RNA, it would cut the reporters and the reporters would start giving emitting light and that light can be then detected and we can say there is a positive result. So how does that work? So imagine that this is, this is a magnet here and this magnet is a sample RNA. So I'm going to go here first and show how the RNA would itself work. These are exciting and beautiful technologies. So look, let's say this is this is the SARS-CoV-2 RNA, SARS-CoV-2 RNA. And we know that RNA has on it genetic material or nuclear basis, correct? Imagine in this RNA, so there are 32,000 uh, RNA gene, uh, RNA pieces on it, or what should I say, bases on it. Out of those bases, imagine that this is the set of the bases that you think are present every single time and are not mutating and are constant and are can be reliably found on the virus uh, RNA and you identify this part. Once you identify this part, you as a scientist would then create a complementary RNA piece that goes with this one. And this is the one that you manufactured based on the study of the original virus's gene or, or the uh, DNA material. With that, you create a guide RNA. So this is a structure that we we create based on what part of the genetic material we want to tag. It is similar to as if you have a document, let's say a word document, and in that you want to search for a specific word. Then what you do is to search for that, you create a complementary system to that word that can attach with that word. It is like search in a document. So it's just that it is at the genetic level. So this is how it works. Then what you do is you take this manufactured RNA and you make it part of a Cas protein. And I'll explain what Cas proteins are doing. So this is a Cas protein. Imagine it has scissors over here. This is a Cas protein. And this technology was actually borrowed in 2012, I believe, from bacteria. Bacteria do use this technology to prevent themselves from becoming infected by the viruses. So uh, bacteria get infected by the viruses too. So they have their own defense mechanism. We have stolen that mechanism from them and we use it now. And that is called CRISPR technology. So here is a Cas protein. Cas protein has some cutting implementations on it. Now we take this RNA guide that we generated and we attach it to the Cas protein. So now this is the mechanism that I was illustrating and I'll illustrate again. Now in this mechanism, when you put that in some substance where you want to detect the RNA that is complement to this one, and if that RNA is present, for example, in case of SARS-CoV-2, the SARS-CoV-2 RNA is present. If that is present and they bind with each other, then this protein will become activated. And once it becomes activated, the scissors will become activated and they would start breaking the reporters. This is the basic mechanism. It's beautiful. So if I go back here, imagine now that this is the RNA sample or the template that we have inserted in the CAS. This is, imagine, a, a magnet. Here, there is a metallic plate. And there is one more metallic plate. We have a battery here. This battery is giving electrical uh, wires to both of the metallic plates, which are then connected to a motor, which has a chopping knife attached to it. And then here are the reporters, which need to be chopped or split if the virus is detected. So let's say this is a healthy person. The virus RNA is not present. So the, there is one more magnet that should go here. That magnet is missing. So this whole circuit is not working and the reporter is not getting split and there will be no fluorescence and there will be detection of no virus. Good. Now imagine we have the same mechanism, but the virus RNA is present as well. So when the virus RNA is present, both of them, those are going to bind. So that is what happens in the Cas protein here, that the viral RNA when present will bind with the guide RNA and they would they would 
fuse or they would bind with each other. When they bind with each other, we use the term medically, we say conformational change. There are electrical and charge changes that happen to the protein and protein changes its shape. So in this illustration, what that means is that when these two magnets would, would get attached to each other with the magnetic force, these plates over here will be pushed to each other as well and they will connect. This is like turning on a switch. When that switch is turned on, the current would flow and the battery, this motor would start working. When the motor would start working, now the reporters that are sitting nearby, this is called collateral cleavage. The cleavage means breaking something into two and collateral means nearby. So the collateral cleavage starts occurring of the reporters and the reporters start getting broken down. When they are broken down, now we can actually put so imagine that now this this tube has the collateral cleavage going on because there was viral rna reporters have started breaking down now when you put a test a paper based strip in this fluid then the reporter is going to be now moving on this on the strip and you can then see if there are enough reporters we can say there is a positive line that is formed so this is the this is the mechanism of Sherlock. I hope it, it makes sense. Do, uh, should I repeat it or it is uh, understandable? So there is a question, uh, Chantal says that, is there a test that should be able to be done with the asymptomatic? So as long as there is virus present, asymptomatic simply means that the patient's immune system has taken care of the virus quickly. And so they, they still have the virus. And so the, the, the saliva test over here would still come back positive if the virus load is enough. And I'll show you the saliva load that they can detect is actually very, very small. So if you see here, look at this. Regardless of our tested combination of reagents and instruments from different vendors, we found that saliva direct is highly sensitive with a limit of detection of six to 12 copies per microliter. So this is for saliva direct. We didn't talk about that yet, but just see six to 12 copies per microliter of saliva. If the viruses copies are six to 12 are present, they can be detected. And the second thing, if you see here, now that we're talking about um, saliva direct here, the price is really cheap. $1.29 to $4.37 per sam sample. So very cheap test. And if you see here in this one, this is the Sherlock that we were talking about. Sherlock has, um, let me see. They also, in this document, they have somewhere the amount of uh, the virus copies. So here, we found that the LOD of the reaction was 100 copies of SARS-CoV-2. So with the 100 copies of SARS-CoV-2, they can actually figure it out. So very tiny amount of uh, virus, if present, can be detected. So back here, so this is Sherlock. So what is the basic mechanism? They are using CAS with the uh, viral RNA detectable guide. And that when, if the virus is present in the saliva, the guide would attach with it, that would activate the CAS protein. CAS protein would start cutting down the reporters. Reporters can then be detected. So done. All right, now let's go to the next one, saliva direct. Saliva direct is actually like a RT-PCR test, as we have seen before as well, but they have optimized it a little bit and they have simplified it a little bit so that it can be done quickly. The And plus it can be done with saliva. The only thing I could not find was the exact time needed. Is it a one hour or two hour or one day? That is not needed. My suspicion after reading their paper was that it can be probably done within an hour or so. So how does the saliva direct work? What they do is they, they pick up the saliva from the person, they add that into a tube where they have an enzyme called proteinase K. So they take a, the, the saliva and they add the enzyme called proteinase K then what they do is they combine that, the proteinase K and saliva, and they combine and mix it. So they kind of stir it together. So these are mixed correctly. Proteinase K is going to start causing the lysis 
of the cells, they, it would start breaking the cells and the RNA from within the cell will start getting released out into the medium. So once that has happened, then they heat up the sample to 95 degrees centigrade. So that causes the heat inactivation of the sample itself. So the things start getting frozen in time. So now we have broken cells, plus we have the inactivated RNAs. Then what they do is they put that RNA or the saliva with the protein SK and heat it into the uh, RT-PCR machine, which would then amplify it. And the rest of the process is the same with the RT-PCR that amplified RNAs can then be detected and we can see if the virus RNA is present or not. So these are the two interesting one that we have. They both are saliva based. One is also called paper based and the other one is RT-PCR machine based. So here we are with these two new tests. I did not feel that the some as some of the tests kept, you know, what the media was doing was that they would only show the paper strip, which kind of leads us to believe that maybe I can just buy this paper strip and just touch it with my tongue and I, it would give me the color and I would know if I have COVID-19 or not. We are not at that point yet. Or if there are some tests like that, I am not aware of those yet. This is what I saw for these two. I hope that this uh, makes sense. And tomorrow is my off. Do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. And we would see each other on Monday. And have a great weekend.